Welcome to episode 13 of Wine Terroir. In today's episode, we are going to explore the red wines of Mount Etna. Stay tuned. So today we're going to talk about Mount Etna, and Mount Etna is based in Sicily, Italy, so the boot, or the ball that the boot is kicking. Um, Mount Etna is interesting because although Sicily is quite warm, um, it's fairly far south, it's actually very high altitude, so between 400 and 1100 meters, and it's shaped around like a C around the volcano with um, the back of the C pointing to, um, to the east. And so all the vineyards are basically surrounded from the north, east, and south. Um, at different altitudes and the land there is actually really interesting because the land, um, the vineyards or the, the crews, uh, contrada as they're called there, are formed by different volcano eruptions over the years. Um, so once a volcano erupts, a couple hundred years later, that, sa that soil, which is very fertile, becomes great for planting uh, red and white grapes. So let's talk about the two red grapes, the two main red grapes in uh, the Etna DOC. The first one um, is uh, Norella Mascalesi, which is the primary superior quality grape. Um, it's usually, how would I relate it? I'd call it something between Pinot Noir and Nebbiolo. So, you know, lighter in body, uh, lighter in color, but still has a little bit of um, uh, strong grippy tannins and also pretty good acid. And then uh, Norello Cappuccio is the last grape and it's usually the lower quality grape. And that's usually to add some color and a little bit of alcohol to the wines. So we're gonna taste the 2008 Tenuta de Ficina, uh, it's a single vineyard called Moose, I'm gonna butcher this, uh, Moose Mechi, or Moose Metzi, however that's called. Um, Moose Metzi is actually um, a vineyard that when the uh, owners of the property took over, it was um, in the Rovatello Contrato, um, which is near the town of Rovatello, uh, and they had 80 year old uh, Norello Mascalesi and Norello Cappuccio vines, and essentially their oldest vines. Uh, so they made this into a, uh, a crew wine, but they don't refer to it as, the, as a Rovatello crew. They just call it their own single vineyard name, uh, Musmetsi. Um, I visited this winery a couple of years ago uh, when I was in Etna, and I was really blown away by the quality of these wines from uh, Tunuta del Ficina. Um, and let's give this a taste. Uh, so on the color, it's definitely a pale ruby. Um, but there's a, a definite uh, pale garnet rim on the outside. I mean, a little bit of bottle age, but also some of this is due to the varietal. Uh, Norello Moscolese and Norello Capuccio in general are thinner skin, more Pinot Noir-esque grapes um, that are, you know, white fleshy grapes with a, a thin skin. So not a lot of um, color pigment or anth anthocyanins that get transferred into the wine. Um, on the nose, oops, spill a little bit, on the nose. So I would say medium intensity aromatics. It's not jumping out of the glass for me um, as some of um, some other Etna Rosas are. Um, getting a uh, you know really light fruit, kind of like red currant, um, you know you know barely ripe strawberry, uh, a little bit of red cherry. There's also something that um, uh, I would say almost like a, a, little, a slight leathery note. On the palate, wine's definitely drying. Um, the acid, um, let's say medium plus acid. I'm definitely feeling the acid on my teeth. Alcohol, as I say, medium plus. I'm I guess 14 and a half, 14. Um, not too bad. The fruit's containing it. Um, tannins, let's say medium plus. Uh, they're pretty uh, grippy tannins still. Uh, but they're pretty fine. They're not like super chunky. They're you know, definitely tingling on my gums. Uh, and in terms of body, I would say medium body. Um, in terms of the palate, it's a little bit more pronounced. Medium plus intensity on the palate. Here I'm going to go still, you know, bright red fruit. Uh, a little bit riper on the palate. Uh, strawberry, red currant. Um, maybe even a little uh, red cherry. And then I'm, I'm getting a little bit of spice. It was, I think this is fermented in stainless steel and a little bit of uh, used oak aging. I'm get, not really getting a ton of oak, but I'm getting definitely the oxidation. So getting that like leathery kind of uh, on the finish, I'm getting this like uh, salted meat, like prosciutto that you just ate. Uh, almost a little bit of pepper as well. 
it's nice. Um, you know, I, I remember tasting this and being blown away by it. Um, I think I had a previous, I had a, um, a newer vintage, uh, and I was able to pick up uh, some older vintages. I wanted to see what they taste like as they developed. Had the 2007 a couple months back, and I was really impressed by it. I'd say this 2008 is probably about a 91 point wine for me. Um, it's it's really good and you know excellent wine, but not not earth shattering. Um, so definitely something to check out. Um, now I believe these guys are imported imported by Winebow, uh, and they can be found at a lot of uh, retailers around the states. So um, if you get a chance, if you like the episode, give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as I've mentioned in the past, Instagram is definitely uh, where I'm the most active. And there's actually a pretty good uh, wine community that I interact with there. So please join me on Instagram if you haven't followed me at Wine Terroir. Thanks for watching. Cheers.